This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship on this sixth Sunday of Easter. We miss all of you and look forward to the day when it is safe to gather once more in person. In the meantime, sing or hum or keep the beat as we join in our opening hymn, which is found at More Voices number 131. It is a paraphrase of Psalm 139, which Harold will be sharing later in the service. Our first reading today is found at Voices United 861, and it's taken from Psalm 139. God, it was you who formed my inward parts. You fashioned me in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wondrous are your works. That I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being fashioned in secret, intricately woven in the mystery of clay. Your eyes, God, saw my substance take shape. In your book, my every day is recorded. All my days were fashioned, even before they came to be. How deep your designs are to me, O God, how great their number. I try to count them, but they are more than the sand. I come to the end, I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Watch closely, lest I follow a path of error and guide me in the everlasting way. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a, a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and, and all knowledge, 
And if I have faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if, if I hand over my body so I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Did you hear King David's prayer? Listen, it was you, God, who formed my inward parts. You fashioned me in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wondrous are your works that I know very well. Psalm 139 is a a beautiful announcement of God's creative spirit. God made us. God made our inward parts. God's fingerprints can be found at our core and our center. We are who we are because of the Creator who fashioned us. And what a marvelous thing God has done in creating you. I know I can't see all of you today, but I know that you are watching. And I am positive that you are marvelous on the outside. Take a look in the mirror and smile. God has done something good. You are fearfully, wonderfully made. But guess what? As spectacular as we may be on the outside, on the inside, we sometimes feel a little lower. When we examine what's inside us, we tend to, to pick up our flaws and mistakes. Well, today, we're going to spend some time thinking about our core and what God has placed at our center. Might we pray? Holy, holy, holy are you, our God. Wonderful are the works of your hands. You have made us, and we belong to you. And so we ask, speak your word to us. May your beautiful word float down like a refreshing rain and find a dwelling place within us. Guide us, we pray, in the everlasting way. Amen. The Bible has much to say about who we are. Today I want to have conversation with you about what God has placed at our core and our center. At our core, we carry an image of who we are and how God has made us. And that God-given image of who we are is a truth that can never be taken away. And when we are feeling healthy at our core, inside, well, we, we feel good about ourselves. We have an inner strength and a confidence that comes from within. And it doesn't matter what's, what's going on ar around us. On the inside, we know who we are. The strength we have as a person comes from the inside. And we all want to be healthy and strong 
on the inside. When we are healthy on the inside, we can do amazing things. I can think of someone in our district who is a rancher. As a family, they have a healthy understanding of their place in God's household and God's creation. They are stewards of the land and the waters and the animals in their care. They are creative, working to raise their livestock in a sustainable way. They understand the connection between family and faith, community and farming. Raising livestock and growing crops, it's, it's not just a way for them to make money. It's a, a way of life and a calling. They have a resilience and a toughness that pulls them through the long days. And even when the work is hard and the rewards are few, they have learned to smile because they know that, that what they do matters. They are not confused about who they are. They have a strength that comes from their core. Well, if God is love and God has made us, then God has fashioned us with love at our core. That's how we're put together. Love is the key ingredient in the recipe for creating a batch of healthy people. And all God's people, the world over, are created this way. Paul's letter to the Corinthians affirms this, how God has placed love at our core and the center of all that we do. And Paul says that if we act for a purpose other than love, we're no more use than a than a clanging pot or a broken guitar string. But when we act for a purpose that is loving and just, we celebrate our core and the one who has made us. The thing is, it doesn't take much to wound a person at their core. Our core can be damaged by so many things in life. A careless word can stab us as surely as a sliver. Some people have their core damaged early in their lives, at school, when they've been stereotyped as slow to learn. And many people have been wounded by others who made judgments about them. Some people have been judged on the, the basis of their, the color of their skin or the shape of their bodies or the hair on their heads or who they love. Some people know the burden of never living up to another person's expectation for them. And today, many people's self-image is under assault by unemployment. All these things can chip away and wear us down. I have met so many people, capable, creative, and productive people, who feel deep down that they are unlovable have no purpose and nothing left to offer. These people have been wounded in their core. And if you identify with them, I want to say, me too. We all carry wounds and scars upon our souls. We've all been told that we haven't worked hard enough or that who we are isn't good enough. Blocking those voices that shout in our heads is soul work. 
We can't permit people who mean to harm our souls to live rent-free in our heads. And that's why it is critical to hang on to the promise of God that inside you are fearfully, wonderfully made, fashioned by God with love at your center. God, God does not intend for you to be put down or to put yourself down, for God created you with love at your core. Now, if God created us with love at our core, then God would want us to protect the core inside the people we meet. We're not to break people down. We're to build them up because we need each other. Young, old, male, female, long hair, no hair, curly hair, straight hair, We need each other. Let's say, for example, I was getting my hair cut, and I said to the stylist, you're only a hairdresser. Why should I listen to you? Well, a comment like that might make the person cutting my hair feel badly about their vocation in life. They might worry about how much education they have. They might become annoyed or distracted. They might begin to think of other things while they are cutting my hair. Well, you know where this is going. A careless word might lead to a a pandemic haircut. Yikes! That's why I always tell my hairdresser how she makes me feel better when I come for a visit. If I've had a bad day, and I get my hair cut, I feel better. I am convinced that people who cut hair make the world a better place. And when we show our appreciation to other people for the things they do, it protects their core. Our loving words build other people up and make them strong. And when people are strong in God's love, they can do amazing things. You know, I think especially in this time of pandemic, we need to use God's gift of love to build other people up. Now is a time to put love into action. And I I ask you, in our present moment, what does love look like for you? Where have you seen it? Could you finish the sentence, I've seen love this week, and it looks like dot, dot, dot. Well, here is a start to our list. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and and how you'd add to it. Love is up at dawn, feet on the ground, tools at hand. Love Cut through the difference, differences that divide us. Love finds a way to make our community stronger. Love anchors us in the well-being of other people. Love is the way we talk to each other, eat with each other, and welcome one another. Someone told me, Love is when your baby needs changing in the middle of the night and you say to your partner, stay in bed, I've got this. That's love. Well, imagine today that we're here in church and I'm at the the flip chart with my marker in hand and so I ask you, what does love look like for you? Just add your comments below the video. Thank you for your love and support to this community, to your neighbors, and to the ministry we share. It is good to be together today, and I say to you, be patient and kind with one another. 
Keep on sharing God's gifts of mercy, grace, and love. God is doing amazing things through you and in you. May God strengthen you at your core, for you are fearfully, wonderfully made. Might we pray? Loving God, you have blessed our world with faith, hope, and love. Help us to be faithful to you, to offer hope to those in need, and to love all your children. We thank you, God, for the gift of this day, and thank you for all of your gifts to us, for the earth which which we work with our, our hands and bodies, that we, your people, might reap a harvest of nourishing food and beauty. God, we pray for all who work the land in this season of planting. We pray that you would sustain them and encourage them and keep them safe. God, we thank you for our church family, for our parents, our grandparents, for our neighbors who sit beside us in the pews and who meet us on the street, for those who are no longer present with us, that great cloud of faithful witnesses which surround us each time we gather. We thank you, God, for people everywhere, in towns and cities, in chapels and at bedsides, who gather in your name and seek to do your will. Holy God, give us a grateful and generous spirit. God, we pray for people who are searching for home. We pray for refugees who have come to Canada and for those who are waiting in camps. We pray for young people caught up in the turmoil of the streets with no place to call home. And we pray for those who are separated from their families due to ill health or this virus. Help us, O God, to be a place of sanctuary that we might be servants to your vulnerable children. Holy God, We would pray for those who are sad this day and who mourn the loss of loved ones. We remember the family of Dorothy Halstead. We pray for all who are ill this day at home or in hospital or in personal care homes. God, we pray for those who are awaiting treatment or surgery, for those who wait for for test results. Grant to all of your people who call upon you your grace, your healing, your hope. God of new life, through Christ you made your home with us. In Christ you let us make your home with you. For the good news of your grace offered to all, we give you thanks and praise, and together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and grant you peace. Our closing hymn is found at More Voices, number 372, Though I May Speak, or maybe more familiarly known as The Gift of Love. Thank you.
Ship and 